prepare yourselves, and get ready to get your squeak on. Let us talk about Alvin and the Chipmunks, which is celebrating its 15th anniversary this year. Alvin! Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 2007 live-action computer animated musical comedy Alvin and the Chipmunks, released by Fox, along with Regency Enterprises for Fox 2000 Pictures. The film was directed by Tim Hill, based on the characters of the same name created by Ross Bagdasarian Sr. Starring the voices of Justin Long, Matthew Gray Goobler, and Jesse McCartney voicing the title characters, along with Jason Lee as Dave Seville, David Cross, and Cameron Richardson. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is really something. This is actually the first live action anime film starring the characters since 2003's Little Alvin and the Mini Monks. As that film features puppetry used for the Chipmunks, and this film features computer animation used for them. Yep. Well, I know this film is heavy, that it's terrible and all, but, well. I don't really think it's completely bad, completely, completely, because even so, Ron Tamil says that the, has criticized the film, film's humor and rehashed kids' movie formula. But, well, that's 15 years ago. Today's actually the film's 15th anniversary. It was released on this day, December 14th, in 2007. So, henceforth, happy 15th anniversary. All right, let's get into our story. A fir tree housing talking chipmunk brothers Alvin, Simon, and Theodore is cut down and driven to L.A. after Jet Records, not to be confused with the old Jet Records label that was home to acts like um, Ozzy Osbourne, Electric Light Orchestra, it's J-E-double-T, okay? Well, they purchase it as the tree as a Christmas tree. Struggling songwriter and composer David Seville has his latest demo rejected by their chief executive, Ian Hawk, his college roommate, who suggests that they give up writing songs. The chipmunks hop into a basket of muffins that Dave stole from one of Ian's co-workers and follow him home. Once there, Dave discovers the chipmunks and kicks them out of the house, only to hear them sing, only you and you alone in Funky Town. And Dave then makes a deal with the little guys to sing songs he writes in exchange for shelter. Later, when Dave tries to present the chipmunks to Ian, they fail to sing because of stage fright. The day worsens as Dave is dismissed from his advertising job due to the chipmunks having unknowingly ruined his presentation boards by drawing and writing on them. While hosting dinner with former girlfriend Claire, Dave struggles to hide the chipmunks after Alvin attempts to create a romantic atmosphere, making Claire uncomfortable and causing her to leave. To make it out to him, the chipmunks go to Ian's lavish mansion, where they sing Dave's song to him, prompting Ian to sign a record deal. The chipmunks quickly become an international success. When Dave, concerned for their well-being, insists that the chipmunks are too young to handle fame, Ian convinces them that Dave is holding them back. After a misunderstanding, the chipmunks choose to live with Ian, whose only interest is profiting off the chipmunks' success. As they set off on a nationwide coast-to-coast -coast tour where Ian exploits their naivety by overworking them constantly. When Ian's plan is revealed on the news, Dave decides to infiltrate their concert at the Orpheum Theater to take them back. Now for the ending. Do you know the procedure? Five cents up this video. Go to the description box below as I count down. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. 
Okay, you've been warned. Before their tour can begin, a veterinarian explains to Ian that the chipmunks' voices have been worn out due to exhaustion and suggests that they take a long rest, but Ian, unwilling to issue refunds, advises the chipmunks to lip sync. Dave sneaks into the concert with help from Claire. The chipmunks hear Dave calling and decide to sabotage the show by causing chaos on stage. Dave is stopped by security, and Ian catches the chipmunks, locks them in a cage, and prepares to take them on their world tour, escaping in his limousine with Dave in pursuit. When he loses Ian, the chipmunks unexpectedly show up in his car. As Dave and the chipmunks reconcile, Ian uncovers the escape, which costs him both his career and his fortune. End of story. So what did I think of Alvin and the Chipmunks? Well, I've seen it a few times. It's pretty cute, and it is pretty funny in ways. Now, I understand that this is another film that creates distance and what have you, but overall, it still did well for youngsters and what have you out there. But I gotta tell you, this was pretty big and what have you. Let's see now. Yeah, it opened pretty big where it lost to I Am Legend and then falling to fall behind that and National Treasure Book of Secrets. Anyway. It went on to become Fox's highest grossing film in the U.S. to be released in 2007. Despite critics dissing the film and what have you, and Rotten Tomatoes also reported that critics say this may be the weakest vehicle for the helium voiced ruins yet. Now, of course, this wasn't their first time on the big screen because, well, I haven't reviewed this film. They actually appeared in the 1987 anime feature, The Chipmunk Movie, yet. No, not, no, the Chipmunk Adventure. Oops, <laughs> my mistake. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I have when I forget when that slips my... Well, and they elaborate that the pundits say, despite a few laughs, this is pretty bland stuff, dated and weakly constructed, and lacking in three-dimensional characters of the human or CGI variety. Well, I understand that. Well, and what's more is, here's more what they say. Though keenly rendered, the film suffers from bland pie humor and rehashed kids' movie formula. But that's understandable. But overall, I had some fun with it. I mean, it, have, it got a soundtrack release, and of course it featured, well, new special version, new... New updates of their classics, Witch Doctor, and the Chipmunk song, Christmas Don't Be Late. And what have you. Plus, there'll be lots of others. And anyway... Uh, still... And the soundtrack actually made the top five on Billboard 200, making it their highest charting album since Chipmunks in Low Places, which was a country album. And I actually have that, by the way, on cassette tape, which that made it to number 21. But however, like the album, it did go platinum. And has become the third platinum album. and six certified album total from the recording industry of America. Anyway, yeah. Let's see, and Christopher Lennert does the score for this, which wasn't too bad. Even so, I had I had some fun with Alan the Chipmunks. I mean, now for our cast, we have Justin Long playing Doing Alvin's voice, who I thought was wasn't too bad. Matthew Gray Goobler voices Simon, not too bad. And Jesse McCartney voiced Theodore. They were all pretty good. But anyway, for our 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 live action cast, Jason Lee as Dave, 
Well, I wasn't sure how good he was, but he did well. He did a great job, especially yelling out and just just like um the anime versions of Dave we seen on the Alvin show back in the sixties and of course the nineteen eighty three series of Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yep, he was really good. David Cross plays Ian Hawk and he wasn't too bad. And Cameron Richardson played Claire. And when I first saw her, I'm thinking I've seen that I've seen that chick before. Yeah, and that's because I recently saw her on the short lived Fox well, horror suspense themed the um, soap type show, Point Pleasant. Anyway, yeah, Alan the Chipmunks is not too, not completely bad, completely, completely. Yeah, it could, its humor could have just used a wee bit of spin polish, but even so, it brought some new life into their, um, and. It really made a big splash. If we want to make three hundred and sixty one million worldwide, it would also go on to have three sequels as well. And those I'll review later on down the road. So anyway, with everything said, would I recommend Alvin the Chipmunks? Well, I'd say maybe be on just play it safe and give it a one time watch. And if you're or if you are a diehard Chipmunks fan, then this would be right up your alley. Well, maybe. That depends. You be the judge. And if it, if you're not satisfied with this, then stick with the Alvin Shore, the Alvin the Chipmunks, a, a series that I grew up with. All right? Enough said. So, anyway, what are your thoughts on Alvin and the Chipmunks? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you yet another anniversary review and this is this I just brought up at the last minute in a previous video. I am going to review Saturday Night Fever in my next video. So be on the lookout for that. So anyway, thank you for watching and if you like this, check out my reviews for some of these other fun filled films with that blend of animation and live action. In the upper left hand corner is my review of Who Framed Roger Rabbit the upper right hand corner is my review of Scooby Doo. And the bottom left hand corner is my review of the Smurfs. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.